Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the DNA polymerase 3. Okay, so let's talk about it. DNA polymerase 3 is uh, one of the complicated DNA polymerase that we find. And polymerase enzyme is important for the DNA replication process, DNA polymerase. For the RNA transcription, we require RNA polymerase. So polymerase enzyme is mainly the major function of polymerase enzyme is to polymerize nucleotide is to polymerize either DNA or RNA. If it polymerizes DNA, it will be called DNA polymerase. If it polymerizes RNA, it will be called RNA polymerase. Now, the polymerase that we see in case of uh, the, trans, uh, the re DNA replication process in uh, prokaryotes, among them, these two, DNA polymerase 3 and DNA polymerase 1 are major type which has a major function in DNA replication in prokaryotes. Now, among them also in prokaryotes, the functionality of DNA polymerase 3 is the most important part. And DNA polymerase 3 is very much complex than DNA polymerase 1. This is discovered later. In the, at the very beginning, we discovered the DNA polymerase 1, discovered by Arthur Kornberg. Now, after that, many years later, his son discovered this DNA polymerase 3. So, as you can see, it's very much complicated structure. They have different subunits. But there is uh, some important thing I want to talk about here about the DNA polymerase 3 is that this DNA polymerase 3 have two identical, almost kind of two identical hemisphere structures. If you look at here, you can find that thing straight, two different, two separate zones. Why it has two different, uh, two separate arrangement as you can see alpha, epsilon and uh, theta and same thing alpha, epsilon and theta and they are linked, those two units, they are linked with structure called tau, tau region or tau subunit of the protein will hold those two hemispheres together. And these two different positions are required for two different strands for the DNA because the DNA synthesis in eukaryotes as well as in prokaryotes occurs simultaneously in both of the strands, one from 5 prime to 3 prime, another from the opposite but also it forms a loop to counter attack that and synthesize sim same time simultaneously both the strands. Though one strand the synthesis is continuous and called the leading strand, other strand is synthesis is discontinuous and called lagging strand. So the structure is very important and the tau subunit just remember this is holding everything together. And another important structure here this, this region of chi, psi, delta, sigma and all this delta gamma. So this is the structure which is called as the DNA loader. So once the DNA is dissociated, helix is actually placed somewhere here which dissociates the both of the strands of the DNA. So until helix the DNA is double stranded, after that the DNA becomes uh, single stranded. So that is the function of helix. So once helix is done, then the single stranded DNA is loaded to one of the arms of this DNA polymerase 3 by this particular section. And this is called the hollow enzyme, the, the hollow enzyme there. So if you look at here, this is a core enzyme actually. And hollow enzyme will be complete if I add a draw structure here which is called as the beta clamp. This is called beta clamp. Beta clamp is a specific protein sequence structure just looking like a clamp which will hold that is like a clip hold on to the single strand of the DNA and due to the presence of this beta clamps and some proteins here theta and epsilon they call as a clamp loader protein with the help of these proteins they load this clamp to the top of the single stranded DNA and can easily start doing a start adding nucleotide sequences and continue this process of DNA replication the DNA polymerization for a long time. This is an important property of DNA polymerase 3 and this property is the higher processivity. DNA polymerase 3 have much higher processivity than the DNA polymerase 1 due to the presence of beta clamp and clamp loader protein and due to the presence of this particular structure. So except for that, this is the polymerization part. So the functionality of DNA polymerase 3 here is the polymerization and we have talked about it how helicase helps and how beta clamp help this process. If you want to know more details about this process, I will recommend you to go back and you will find video on DNA replication in my YouTube channel. Watch that video and you will understand the process. So if you had the polymerization process, in this polymerization process, this polymerization direction here is 5 prime to 3 prime. 
this is the only disadvantage for this DNA polymerase 3. The polymerization is only possible from 5 prime to 3 prime as well as they have another disadvantages. They cannot, this polymerase 3 cannot initiate base pairing. It cannot initiate the nucleotide addition until and unless they find a free 3 prime hydroxyl group. So, for the continuation or the polymer, let's say this is a template strand. For the polymerization process, by looking at the single stranded DNA, the polymerase cannot initiate. So, let's say everything is there, DNA polymerase is also there, but the polymerase cannot initiate until and unless it finds what is called a primer. And the primer have a 3 prime hydroxyl region. And then, with the help of this 3 prime hydroxyl, this DNA polymerase can extend the chain but cannot initiate. On the other hand, RNA polymerase can initiate from scratch. So, de novo polymerase is RNA polymerase. This DNA polymerase is not de novo. They require the stretch of nucleotide sequence as primer. Now, this is uh, one disadvantage, but other thing, other functionality here is the exonuclease functionality. Exonuclease means if this is a DNA or say the RNA whatever in this case DNA exonuclease. So, if this is the DNA it can cleave from outside I mean from terminal it can cleave that DNA that is called the exonuclease activity it can degrade the nucleotide sequence there. So, why it is important? It has a constructive feature polymerization destructive feature exonuclease activity. Why it is required? Because during the replication process, if it is erroneously add a mismatch, erroneously add a wrong nucleotide. Let us say what we know the process actually follows the Watson Creek base pairing, right? So, if we have like this, and it is placing all the required, uh, all the required nucleotides let's say T, C, G, G and instead of A it provides a C here. So, let's say it made a mistake here. So, if make any mistake during this process of polymerization, this polymerase enzyme can sense that. How can they sense? The sensing is possible because every time it puts a wrong nucleotide, the, the processivity goes slow and slow. So, due to that process of how many time it takes to, to place this nucleotide and form hydrogen bonds, it counts the whether it is any problem or not. If it finds the problem, then this polymerase shifts its structure slightly so that there are different domains in this polymerase actually. Catalytic domain is the polymerization domain, exonucleus domain and also finger domain which is placing the DNA properly. Right? So, this is much more complicated the DNA polymerase 3, but if you look at the structure of DNA polymerase 1, you will find the structure resembles just like a hand, one finger, I mean thumb, fingers and the palm. Palm is usually the catalytic domain. So, it can sense the wrong nucleotide, it can come back and then the exonucleus activity takes place and they will cut this wrong nucleotide away and then they put the right nucleotide in the position. That is why the exonuclease activity is required, right? So, that is how the DNA polymerase 3 is there and this exonuclease activity direction for the DNA polymerase is however opposite 3 prime to 5 prime. That is logical because if you have the polymerization activity from 5 to 3 and also the exonuclease from 5 to 3 it can have some problem. So, if it is, it is adding something in the forward 5 to 3 prime it has some problem go back and cut the first 3 prime nucleotide out. So, that is completely logical to have, right. But remember the DNA polymerase 1 besides having 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity, polymerase 1 also have 3 to 5 prime exonuclease activity. Polymerase 3 only have 3 to 5 prime exonuclease, but polymerase 1 have 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease along with this 3 to 5 prime. So, just remember that and I hope that video is helpful for you like the video, subscribe to my channel, share this video, destroy the share button and put some comments there. Thank you.